Okay, so I have one logo solution I think works pretty well. It's a vector. It was live traced from a sketch, and there's no kind of big glaring problems with it that I haven't fixed, right? And most importantly, it scales pretty well. So really small, like postage stamp size, it's still pretty clear what it is. You want clear, simple, and versatile. Now my second test, which I'm a little bit more excited about, looks terrible compared to this. But remember all the things I did to clean this up. So I'm gonna show you those steps again. So I brought it in as a raster file from Photoshop as a PNG, scaled it up to fit the artboard, and now I'm going to try live tracing it using the, the preset option of silhouettes. I have my advanced image traced options open, so to see those you have to click here, right? Because even though the preset is silhouettes, I have full control of it. And the most important is to ignore the whites. So ignore white should be checked, otherwise you're going to end up with white vector shapes and black vector shapes. And you don't want that. So these default settings do pretty well, but there's a little too much variation in some parts, right, like there. So I'm going to try a threshold that's more severe. That cleans it up without losing too much. I don't want to lose that though. So let's see. And then I can play with fewer paths to clean it up. Smooth it out. Yeah, I like that. I like what it did to the curves there. Then I can try allowing more noise. I like the little bumps there. I like what's in the eye. So let's smooth those out a little bit, broaden them so they feel more intentional. Okay, that looks good. Even though it allowed a little bit of noise there. So it's all give and take because by the time I get to where it deletes it from there, I might lose a little bit of what I want from the eyes. Let's do that. Once you're happy with it, make sure ignore white is checked and you hit expand. It's not a vector until you hit expand. And then you can check it with your small selection tool. And once you see all those little anchors like that, like it has chicken pox, then you know it's a vector. Then I can use my large selection tool and make sure I ignored the white by dragging it over on the gray. Woo, I'm flying it around. All right, so big improvement very quickly. And already I'm liking this a little bit more as a logo, as a strong kind of melting Twitter bird image than this. It's just a little bit more graphically powerful. But I'm not sure about this. So I have a few options. One, now that it's a vector, I can modify it. I can select it and I can erase away from it using my stylus, pressure sensitive. I can delete it away and because I've cut a new shape, then I can just use my small selection tool and delete the inside. And yes, I am liking that better. I even like that it's thicker on this side, thinner on this side, but this obviously needs to be cleaned up. So I'm going to use the pencil tool and the small selection tool. So this is my favorite way to work. The pencil is my main tool, so I'm on that. But when I hold down command, it goes to the last selection tool I've used. So the selection tool I'll use first is the small selection tool to see the anchor points. So that when I use the pencil tool, all I have to do is hold down command and it will go back to that. Which means, before I can redraw an edge, these are like the magic scissors on your construction paper, I have to be able to see those anchors. So I have to hold down Command, click it, see the anchors, and then I can redraw. As long as I start on the path and end on the path, it will create a new shape for me. Notice that the inside of this, these are all filled paths. Filled paths have an inside and an outside edge. So I have to draw the inside of the edge first, and then I can draw the outside. And just like I did with the other version, 
If I don't want to use the pencil tool, I can use the smooth tool as well to get it where I want. That might be good on this side. The smooth tool is right underneath the pencil. And it just averages out your, your strokes. Now, why I think this is actually working pretty well for my design is my design is all about curves. I don't have a lot of sharp, hard edges. And when you do a lot of smoothing, you do a lot of reducing, you lose those hard edges. But my design doesn't require them. The other thing I can do that I did on the last version that was helpful was select the whole thing, go up to Object, Path, and then just simplify it in general. It's going to remember the settings I used. My original is in red. And I'm just going to take the edge off a little bit. And that will help even things out. And then I, I need to do kind of the spot treatment, see where things are a little off. And then I'll use that pencil tool to redraw them. And that's the hardest thing to do with the pencil tool. It just takes practice to get a hard edge <laughs> instead of a curve. Now, zooming's a little tricky. So I do a lot of the holding down the space bar, just like in Photoshop, and panning. Uh, there we are. So, but sometimes you really have to zoom in to see what's going on. So that anchor point's a little too far, so I can just use the small selection tool and tighten up that anchor, like so. And then while it's still selected, I can use the smooth tool if I feel I need to, to even out these anchor points. Same thing here, but my favorite is the pencil tool. Remember, you can double click it and you can set it to be more smooth or more accurate because I'm just doing cleanup work. I want it to be more smooth. And I get to make kind of these nice, nice loopy alterations. The Illustrator will automatically make nice and smooth for me. And I can also just stretch them and transform them using the small selection tool, moving those anchor points wherever I need them to be. So we have ultimate control. Remember, this is a logo. It's about being versatile. It's about being clear and it's about being simple. So something this tiny and that subtle, that doesn't make sense in a logo. So if I want to keep it, and I do, I need to build it up a little bit. But in order to redraw, I need to start on the path and end on the path. Ah, so I might need to zoom in to do that. There we go. It might thicken it out on one end. There we go. And then I might smooth it out. So these are definitely shapes, not lines. Logos are built with shapes. And sometimes those shapes need to be smoothed. Though, like I said, there is an audience out there, and I think some very good design work out there, digital artwork done with um, 
more traditionally textured logos that aren't just perfectly digital and smooth to look like letter letter high type or to look like woodblock prints. These are all things you can play with. I just want you to feel like you have control of these tools. It's a little too weird. And remember, Command-Z is how you can go backwards. And then the Smooth tool is a nice refining tool, so you're not having to change every anchor point individually. This is making it tough. Making our sketches the uh, right sketches. Do you want us to draw it out in pencil first and then you can over it? Yes, I always draw out my sketch like the initial one I showed you, kind of outline based, and then I use tracing paper or something to do different ink versions on top. So, like, are you going to fill in the eyes with black? Or are you going to fill in around the eyes so that the eyes are white? So that's why I'll, I'll do a pencil sketch and then I'll do uh, different versions of ink. Now you can do that in Photoshop as well. You just scan in your, your pencil sketch and then you can kind of quickly color in different shapes on different layers. The problem is if you bring a pencil sketch into Illustrator in order to live trace it, it's not going to work because pencil is a dry media. And so you don't get the, um, the clean shapes out of it like you do from an ink scan. But as long as you have a plan, then, you, then you're able to work with it. And you can just spend forever refining it. So these same tools I'm using just to refine these designs, which were outputted from my from my uh, scans of my inks. Yeah, I think that's pretty clean. That looks pretty good. So now I have two versions that work, right? Just as black shapes. And this is my favorite. And I think that one's, that's good. So how do I save them? So I'm going to say file, save as, Carl logo test two, not as an AI file, because now I'm, I feel like I'm done with the vector, but I want to be able to do more with it. So I'm going to save it as what's called an EPS file. That's like a portable vector file. That way I can bring it back into Photoshop if I wanted to. And I'll show you some reasons when we talk about coloring them. And I say, okay. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. You do not have to do two different designs. I'm just showing you a lot of variation. Save as an EPS file once they're a vector. Okay, now informed by that, there's things I like about both of them, but this is the one I'm, I'm happiest with. I'm going to open that up in preview, keep it in the corner there, turn off these that I live traced, and go back to my original here. Now, how can I just draw those shapes instead of having the computer trace my inks for me? So this is called digital inking. So instead of using the inking pen, how can I digitally ink? Now that I know where I'm going, I have a much better way to approach this. So there's only one shape I'm going to keep that I've already made, and that's that eye. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to move that eye into that layer, and I'm going to delete this layer Oops. <laughs> by dragging it to the trash. Okay, now instead of trying to do every little detailed thing, I want to first notice that this whole silhouette, the reason this is a more successful image is that that whole silhouette is outlined. So the first thing I might do, let me lock that eye and turn it off, make a new layer, and I'm just going to try to outline this whole thing. 
I'm going to use the pencil and I'm going to use it not on